after I had written a note and I was ready to go. I went back to my truck to go get the gun. The organization that's launching a counterattack against an enemy that's claimed the lives of our veterans. Warriors come to this place because they're, they're, they're looking for hope. This is where healing is. Head to the drop zone for Operation Restored Warrior. Plus, learn a holiday tradition of a civil rights hero. Martin Luther King's niece, Alveda King, takes us inside the legend's home. All on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi everybody, welcome to the show. In honor of Veterans Day, we want to celebrate those who serve and have served in the United States Armed Forces and share some stories that have captured hearts around the world. They'll capture yours too, I think. Indeed they will. <laughs> One story that's gone viral is Sergeant Pablo Uresta's surprise for his family. His wife, daughter, and two sons thought they were being recognized for their participation in a fundraiser, and they were simply there to get their picture taken with the mascot, but instead got the surprise of a lifetime. Sergeant First Class Pablo Uresta, a 20-year veteran of the U.S. Army, pretended to be the mascot at that game, as you can see. The family <laughs> was emotional seeing him. Pablo just returned home from a year-long deployment to South Korea. Oh my goodness. I never see one of those stories without tearing up I know, myself. I know. They're just such precious family reunions. Well, here's a fascinating and inspiring story as well. Army mm -hmm. Lieutenant Jonathan David Rozier was 25 when he was killed by an unexploded rocket propelled grenade in Baghdad. That was back in 2003. He left behind a wife, Jessica, and son, Justin, who was only a few months old at the time. Jessica was suddenly faced with the harsh realities of being a single mom and growing up without a father present for her child, so she sold some items to help make ends meet. But one item came back to them 15 years later. Take a look. Jessica posted on social media asking for help to find the car. And as you could see there, the rest is history. What a moment that mm -hmm. is, you know, for a young man who never as a little boy really even got to know his dad, remembering him just through pictures. Absolutely. Then to sit in the driver's seat mm -hmm. of the same car. I, I watch video of the car arriving and mom is in tears as the car is being delivered. Uh, and he gets in the car and the reporter is asking him, so how does this feel? And he, he keeps trying to say something, but nothing, <laughs> nothing comes, comes out. out. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> He's just that surprised and so amazed. Wonderful. Beautiful story, wow, beautiful it really story. Is. It really is. A North Carolina veteran wounded in action received a huge surprise in Raleigh. All part of Mission Thank You, a cross country motorcycle tour to thank those who have served and surprise a few along the way. So why don't you come sit on your very own? I'm still in shock and awe. I'm still in shock and awe over this. A beautiful new surprise for Army veteran Jeremy Thomas to say thank you for your service. Like I said, I'm floored by it. You know, uh, just floored by it. Thomas was wounded in the Iraq War in 2003. I was in the process of shutting the tow hatch because we were taking small arm fire. And in the process of shutting that tow hatch, I was picked up and thrown out. Um, so when I landed, I landed on all fours, and that's what dislocated my elbows, broke my kneecap, uh, tore my ACL. He's back home in Raleigh now and doing well, and one of his greatest loves, riding motorcycles. It's what's happening right now in the moment. That's why I put a lot of miles on, um, because it helps with the demons you have to deal with on a daily basis. This is all part of Mission Thank You. Harley Davidson and the Wounded Warrior Project teaming up with Adam Sandoval, founder of Scoot in America, to surprise veterans with new motorcycles as he travels across the country. And it's really just a cross-country tour where I ride my motorcycle with my pal Scooter here 
um, across the country, thanking all those who have served in our military. Sandoval is stopping at every Harley Davidson shop in America. On Thursday, it was Ray Price at Raleigh ringing in this big surprise for Thomas. It's a brand new uh, 2018 and it's got the Milwaukee 8 motor. It has a lot of power. It'll take you where you want to go. And for Thomas, it means a lot. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't change anything. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd go back right now if they said, hey, come on back in. I'd go right back in. What a heart. What a heart indeed. <laughs> what a heart. I like, I want the job of the man who gets to give yeah. those away every <laughs> yes, time. Is. Wow, what a great... <laughs> Privilege. Everyone's speech. I think that's actually going to end at the Veterans Day parade. And I've been following the list to see the names as he gives them out on the website. It's beautiful to see each story. It's so wonderful. And he goes, I, I never got nervous before, but delivering this makes me nervous. Yes. Well, just the fun of seeing the reaction, mm -hmm. I think, has to be amazing. It is. Well, now on the home front, an alarming statistic, one that's about more than just numbers. It's about people, those who served their country. One United States veteran kills himself every hour of every day in America. That's shocking. Mm -hmm. That's more than 8,000 per year and about 2,000 more than have died in the Iraq and Afghan wars combined. Heartbreaking to hear. One organization is trying to change all that by helping veterans fight their way back to restoration. Mark Martin brings us this story of hope and healing. Veterans fighting overseas not only suffer physically, but emotionally as well. Hidden battle scars that make life difficult back home. That's where Operation Restored Warrior comes in. To find it, CBN News traveled to the heart of Colorado. With its wide open spaces and large horse corral, the Four Eagle Ranch resembles something out of the Old West. But take a closer look and you'll see much more. Organizers of Operation Restored Warrior say it's a location where healing takes place. While the program welcomes all faiths, its core Christian ministry is the five-day program called the Drop Zone. The like Drop Zone is a place in enemy territory where you go take that ground. And very often in kind of Christian environments, we refer to things as retreats. I'm going to go to a retreat. And that just didn't sit well with us as professional military men. It's like, well, why are we retreating? How about if we go gain ground? So we specifically call coming to a drop zone a counterattack. And that, that appeals to warriors. That counterattack is threefold. Rescue, rebuild, and restore. Warriors come to this place because they're, they're, they're looking for hope. And often the enemy has just beat them down. But this is the place where they know there's some hope. And then when they get here, what they find out is that this is where healing is. And that hope and healing is here because Jesus is here. The intensive program targets areas of the heart that need healing. ORW leaders hold to the belief psychology reveals Jesus heals and say it's been proven hundreds of times. For participants like Navy veteran Paul Williams, the program can be a literal lifesaver. July 2nd of this year, I had written a note and I was ready to go. And um, it just didn't happen. You know, uh, I went back to my truck to go get the gun and you know, it wasn't there. Um, so I just started praising Jesus with my praise and worship music and said, you know what, I need to give this ORW, Operation Restored Warrior, a really good shot. And that decision led to victory. I was able to open up to Paul, the, you know, the founder of ORW, about all the trash that I've been carrying. And it felt so good to finally just let it out, you know. I can't thank this organization enough. I mean, it's, I came here fighting for my life. And I'm gonna walk away a champion, so. I love them a lot and I'm super thankful for it. Former atheist Paul Lavelle started ORW nine years ago. Around 2008, I felt like Jesus just put in my heart that he, he had gifted me my whole life to rescue people. And I felt like I had a unique gift of healing as well. But I had no idea it had to do with anything spiritual. 
And about 2008, I just felt this nudge that I had to do something. ORW, our focus is to heal. And we bring Jesus into that healing process. Army veteran Braxton Dunbar dealt with many things, including suicidal thoughts before coming to ORW. I was definitely a, uh, a, a broken, broken man. Um, had a lot of depression and anxiety, um, a lot of anger. A whole lot of anger, um, and just felt lost. Really, uh, just didn't find, didn't know where my place was. Didn't know how to find my place either. Dunbar accepted Christ during the drop zone and decided to get baptized. The same individual that prayed with me, Jordan, um, kind of came to me and said, "You know, you accepted him yesterday, and you verbally accepted him into your life. Would, would you want to show the action of it?" And uh, there was no question at all. I said, "Absolutely." I, I'd love to. Retired Air Force Chaplain Steve Frick also received healing through the program. ORW doesn't just help, they heal. And that's a little hard to hear when you first get here, but I'm telling you, it's true. In addition to powerful sessions building up the faith of the men, the drop zone also allows time for recreational activities like fly fishing. What can they learn from this? Lavelle says it nourishes the soul, among other things. The reason we do the activities is because it's, it's part of a spiritual longing uh, for a man to have adventure in his life. Uh, it's one of the core desires of a man. And so as part of this restoration process, we want to remind them that there is adventure out there. Retired Command Sergeant Major Chris Fields is the drop zone lead facilitator. He too once contemplated taking his life and also lost fellow service members to suicide. Fields understands the urgency of going through this program before it's too late. Don't wait another moment to reach out and to ask for help. I used to think that I you know, was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I ate bob wire in the morning and you can surmise what I did in the afternoon. But when I reached out for help, I'm stronger than I ever was. And, um, and it just takes one moment, one moment to say, okay, let me see what this is all about. And then let Jesus take it from there. Mark Martin, CBN News, Walcott, Colorado. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, you, the amazing results. I mean, you just rejoice Absolutely. with them. It's almost like you find your soul again. You do. You in do. In the middle of all of that. It's something to be said for being in a place where you realize you're not alone. I mean, every one of them had contemplated suicide. Every one of them. Well, and I think also there's something to be said for all of us, mm -hmm. but specifically in a need like this, to come out of the fray. You know, to just mm -hmm. come to a place where you can set aside all the burdens and the responsibilities and, and the concerns and just listen to God. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Just bear your soul with people who understand. Indeed, Wonderful. a place for healing. Mm -hmm. Well, coming up, we're going to meet a couple struggling with military life. A military spouse spends a lot of time thinking about what's going to happen if they get that knock at the door. It takes a while to get used to being a civilian again and realizing that you are not in a combat zone anymore. See how this military family gets the support it needs. Plus, learn how you can help military families around the country. Don't go away, it is all next. Here at CBN, we are committed to supporting our military families through an outreach called Helping the Home Front. We want to introduce you now to Kent. After 14 years in the military and three combat missions, he was looking forward to hanging up his boots for good. But with bills piling up, he knew his transition to civilian life would not be easy. Kent has served in the U.S. Army for 14 years, including three combat deployments. His wife, Sarah, knows what he has sacrificed to serve our country. I'm so proud of him because it's let me see a side of him I don't think I would have seen. He is the hardest working person I've ever met. And it just makes me feel that God has put me with the uh, right person. Those deployments weighed heavily on the whole family. I think every military spouse spends a lot of time thinking about what's gonna happen if they get that knock at the door. When you get home, there's a lot of stressors. It takes a while to get used to being a civilian again and realizing that you are not in a combat zone anymore. Kent will soon retire from the Army. While they look forward to more time together, 
they've also been hit with many large financial setbacks. A major one is their van, which would cost more to repair than it's worth. We don't go very far because I know that one of these days it is going to go and we're going to be on the side of the road with, with the kids in the hot Kentucky sun. So just praying it holds together. Very concerned, very concerned. Something that I stress about. The family goes to Emmanuel Bible Church, which contacted Helping the Homefront. Esther Dan Swartz told the family what we were about to do. The friends at uh, CBM have uh, wanted to come alongside you and assist you. Helping the home front gave Ken and Sarah $10,000 to pay off their old van and help purchase a reliable, newer one. The Wyatt Johnson Auto Group arranged the trade-in and gave them a deep discount. In addition, they want to take you and the children to Sears and uh, they have $1,000 that they want to use to uh, assist you to get some new clothing for the children. That day, we took them shopping. The kids loved picking out new clothes. I am also humbled and grateful for what you guys have done for us, um, for my family, you know, very grateful. The shocker. This is something we've prayed about for months. This has set us on a course where we're going to be okay. This has set us on the course where we are going to be okay. You know, when a soldier decides to serve, that entire family decides to serve. And serving is beautiful, uh, and we have our freedom because of it. But when that soldier does return home, it really is a significant transition into civilian life as we've seen play out story after story. The good thing is knowing that what you just saw is something that you helped to make possible. You help us to help the home front. What you do matters, and it matters to families like that. The other thing we need to know is that that's just one family you saw. There are countless families who are in desperate need of support and help. Something as simple as being able to trade in your car to get a discount to purchase another and going shopping, things we often take for granted. You don't get wealthy being a soldier in this country, but you are certainly richer for having served your country, but that sacrifice is deep and it is great, and it is nice for you to come home and see that your family cares, that this country cares, and that you are not forgotten. You can help us to continue helping the home front by logging on to CBN.com and also calling this number here on your screen, 800 700 7 Thousand. There are countless people we want to continue to help, and you right here help us to make that possible. We say thank you, and this is the season of saying thank you. Let us thank our veterans. Well, still to come, with Thanksgiving and Christmas around the corner, Alveda King shares some of her famous family's holiday traditions and why family time is so important. You don't want to miss her. She's here after this. Our next guest has a family rich in heritage, not only in our nation's history, but with their own holiday traditions. Take a look. Alveda King is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the daughter of Reverend A.D. King. Alveda's family carries on the holiday traditions of her grandparents, Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Williams. The Williams King family celebrates by singing around the piano, posing for caricature drawings of the family, and of course, eating food, food, and more food. Most importantly, it all centers around the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, Alvita will share her family's delicious holiday recipes that bring laughter, love, and joy to their holiday table. Well, joining me now is Alveda King. It's great to have you back with us again. Thank you, Always Terry. A Good treat. to see you. Always yeah. a treat when you come. How many generations now, when you all get together, do the, do, do the kings surround themselves with? Well, there are about five living today, and wow. we can go all the way back to seven and kind of trace everybody yes. all the way back to seven. And it's just so wonderful. I think my Aunt Christine became 90 this year. Wow. My mom will be 87 this year, so it's, it's a wonderful time. Cooking. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Yes, yes. There's so much that we all celebrate and try to jam into these special holidays, but really in your cookbook and just in, in conversation with you, the core of your family is family. 
Absolutely. And I wanted to say this even before we go into it. It's Gigi's Home for the Holidays cookbook. And you're a gorgeous grandma, Gigi. I'm a gorgeous <laughs> grandma. And so it's so wonderful now as grandmothers, we have an yes. obligation or responsibility to keep before the younger ones what family means. Yes. And food is one way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. To make it continue to matter because the world goes so fast, it's becoming increasingly difficult, I think, to wedge in and demand that time for what matters to you. Absolutely. Another element of your family as you gather together that you've held really in high esteem is your faith. What are some of the things you do that, that connect your family with their faith over the holidays? We know that faith, hope, and love abide and the yeah. greatest is is love, of course. And so even in our family, we have different opinions, different yes. philosophies, different politics, but we agree not to fight, not to argue, and not mm -hmm. to splinter over those differences. And we actually pray together. We open even our phone calls when we have family calls. We open with prayer. We close with prayer. Yeah. And that's going to be very important. Yeah, Boy, I love that, Elvita, because in today's world, it's become so, there's so much rancor in the air. Uh, just people's voices, anger, hostility. Yes. That's a tradition that's worth holding on to for your family. So kudos to you for prioritizing that, really. Thank you. I want to talk about um, your cookbook because it's pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank <laughs> and if you're like me, I am always looking for special recipes for the holiday. And you have put together Gigi's Home for the Holidays cookbook. Why did you do this? Well, I did it for several reasons. Generationally, there are family recipes. I'm a shake and pour cook. That means I don't <laughs> write down cup of this, cup of this that. Must I have just been painful for you then. Pour. It was very <laughs> painful. So we use Sunday suppers as a test kitchen and cook the same recipe over. Yeah. And uh, and as a matter of fact, we put QR codes in there, oh, show, and you can actually scan it actually those. Like and if you scan that, the video will pop up, and you can see some of the recipes and see us cooking. So I did it for my children, for yes. generations to mm -hmm. come for audiences like this one who want to know what did Martin Luther King Jr. like to eat? He liked fried chicken and collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned that in the book as well. Yes. Well, tell me about Sunday supper. What is that like for you? It's very important for families to get together as often as possible, even just in our individual our own nuclear family mm -hmm. and to sit down and eat together, look at each other, turn off the television yeah. and see each other around a meal. And I found out my youngest son, uh, Sunday supper means so much to him. He's a grown man. He has a child of his mm -hmm. own, but uh, he's very disappointed if he doesn't get Sunday supper yeah. to uh, at least he works in the afternoon uh, at an airline. But did you do Sunday supper today? And so I was beginning to realize that taking time to go to church together, pray together, and eat together at least once a week is very yeah. important. Do you think they'll carry on those traditions when you're not here anymore? I believe my children will because I'm carrying on the tradition <laughs> for those who came before yeah. me. And so I believe so. You also wrap lots of elements of fun in your gathering together. How in the world did caricature drawing become a part of that? Well, I've been doing that since I was in my 20s, believe it or not. Really? And now I'm 67, but at every gathering or party, I call a caricature artist over. And Tony Smith has been with us for years. Yeah. And you just, everybody who wants gets their... They get their picture drawn, and then there's someone there always playing the piano. Yeah. I have a massage therapist that comes over. Ooh, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> yes, uh, that's what we do. That is so fun. I, I know that when everybody gathers, it's an opportunity also for cousins to knit together, um, for brothers and sisters to knit together. That's true. What do you want, when it's all said and done, what do you want your legacy to your family to be? I want my family to remember I was the oldest in my generation, the first grandchild of Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Williams King. As a matter of fact, my mom actually wanted to abort me. And granddaddy said, look, you can't abort that baby. Then it would have been a DNC. Abortion yes. was illegal in 1950. I saw her in a dream three years ago. She has bright skin and bright red hair, and she's going to bless many people. Wow. And so mother kept me. Yeah. And so through the years, I think about that and I think about being the oldest grandchild in that generation as a guardian of the legacy, mm -hmm. reminding them we have to pray, we have to respect life. Natural marriage is in the Bible. We need to do that. Uh, we have to take care of the poor, but we want to empower the poor yes. and not entitle the poor, but empower people mm -hmm. to work. So these are principles that I share with every generation, and I believe that those coming after me mm -hmm. will still do the same thing. It's almost thing. like you had a calling 
before you were ever born. I didn't even know it, but yeah. I did. You have so many wonderful recipes in here for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. Do you have a favorite? Really, believe it or not, it's probably the simplest recipe in the book, but it's the trifle, punch Ooh, bowl yes. cake or the trifle. And you yes. can use uh, creme fraiche or whipped cream and fresh fruits and and uh, you layer all of those, and it's a very beautiful dessert. Yes. And that's my favorite holiday, holiday it dessert is to me. It's beautiful. Make. It's it really tasty is. and beautiful. And can I just say, I just had a bite it's of the good. carrot cake, ah. and I just want you to know, going up a dress size, but it was worth hey, it. Hey, sometimes <laughs> you have to do it. You have to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're loving to cook for your family over the holidays and you want to learn more, check out Elvita King's book. It's called Gigi's Home for the Holidays Cookbook. It's available as an e-book through Amazon. Thank you. You're Thank a treasure you. to God all of us. You, you, you too. too. Thank you, you too. Happy God holidays. Bless. Here's a holiday message for you. This is from Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good for his mercy endures forever. This holiday season, get your family together and begin some legacies of your own for your kids and your grandkids. Bless you.